where ADHD and addiction uh, come together is that they're both characterized by loss of control. And when we're talking about addiction, we're talking about loss of control over how much you use, what you do when you use. Can you stop using when you start using? I don't know of anybody that set out and said, you know, I think what I'm going to do tonight is go out and get a drunk driving. That's really what I want to do is get popped for, for driving under the influence. Any of you go out and do that intentionally? But how many of you have gotten drunk driving? A couple of you? It's all right. You don't have to raise your hands on that. <laughs> what happens is loss of control is that you go out, you have some drinks, you take some drugs, and you can't stop. You take more than you think you're going to take, and it, it hits this part of the brain, this judgment center part of this part of the brain here. And so you don't have as great a judgment. And what do drugs and alcohol tell you? They tell you you're fine. You know? No, I can drive. I'm fine. I can drive. I just all the time, you know? <laughs> Other people are saying, hey, what are you doing? No, 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 no. No, I can drive. I'm fine. So the alcohol is inhibiting this part of your brain that interferes with your judgment. And if you have ADHD and you have impulse control problems and some of those issues, it's a double whammy because now you have poor judgment, your prefrontal part of your brain that's supposed to be working really well to help you with your prioritizing, your judgment, your focus, and your concentration. You just wiped part of that out with the alcohol and the drugs. So now you're in extra bad shape. So addictions whether it's food, drugs, or alcohol, they're characterized by loss of control. You eat more than you plan on eating. You drink more than you plan on drinking. You can't control it. And once you get started, you can't stop. You can't stop. That's loss of control with anything, with a behavior, whether it's gambling, whether it's sex, whether it's shopping. When you're doing something and you can't stop doing it, that's loss of control. So... Let's look at what, you know, what is addiction, and I, I like to keep it real simple, and that is if you have a problem in any of the following, your work or your school, your relationships, the law, your finances, your health, or your self-image, if you have a problem in any of these areas, Work or your school, your relationships with people. That means your kids, too. That means your parents, too. That means your, the people that you work with, too. The law. That means not just being arrested for things, but that means, you know, not following through with things, not getting your taxes due on time, not paying for your vehicle registration on time because you forget to do it. Your finances. We know what drugs and alcohol can do to our finances. Your health. We know what drugs and alcohol can do to our health. And what do they do to your self-esteem? Huh? And lower it. Why? Because when you, when, you, when you lost control, it's hard to feel good about yourself when you've lost control. It's hard to feel good about yourself when you're doing something and you know it's hurting you and you can't stop doing it. That feeling is a horrible feeling when you know you got to stop, but you can't stop doing it. And you pray about it and you... you, you make promises with God and your family and everybody, you're never going to do it again, and then what happens? You do it. Do you do it because you're a bad person? No, no you do it because you've got a disease called addiction. And when you have a disease called addiction, you do all sorts of stuff that you wouldn't normally do. So if you're having problems in any one of these areas, let alone several of these areas, and in spite of those problems, you can't stop, we're looking at addiction. So, both ADHD and addiction are characterized by loss of control. Let's go back to talking about the brain a little bit. This is your executive center in here. This is the part that helps you stay focused. It, uh, it helps you to be able to have uh, set priorities, to organize. You've got your judgment there, all that stuff there. And then you've got this other part of your brain in here called the reward center. In this reward center, it's very interesting because all addictive substances, everything, caffeine, nicotine, heroin, speed, cocaine, all addictive substances hit this reward center, and sugar does too. Latest studies show sugar hits this reward center, and what it does is it increases dopamine, 
to this executive center. Okay? So everything that is addictive increases dopamine, and that helps us to have a sense of well-being, and it helps us to concentrate, focus, and all those kinds of things. Isn't that interesting? Okay, that if you have ADHD, you have a very hard time utilizing your body's dopamine and the dopamine in your brain, and yet, without even knowing what you're doing, you find out that, oh my goodness, look what happened when I take these, uh, when I smoke a cigarette, what happens? I feel a little bit calmer. I can focus a little bit better for a few minutes. Okay? Problem with nicotine is that it's short acting, and so it's broken up really quickly. By, and so you need more, and you need more, and you need more. See, some of you are, are better neurochemists than you realize. You've already figured out how to work with your neurochemistry. Didn't know you were doing that, did you? Okay, so um, when you're looking at that brain and you have ADHD, so it's already out of con just kind of slowed down and you're having a hard time with focusing and good judgment and all those things, impulse control. Now you put in alcohol or you start smoking some pot, or you take some of the benzodiazepine-type tranquilizers or some of the Vicodin or the heroin or some of those kind of drugs. <coughs> what you're doing is you're actually putting that area, in a sense, more asleep. And so it's kind of like, um, you know, mission control in a space center, and you've got all these people and all these computers, and you're trying to get this spacecraft back to, to landing. You ever seen those movies like Apollo or whatever? Okay, so you got all these people there, and that's your brain, these little control centers, right? So as you're drinking more, as you're smoking more pot, as you're taking more drugs, what's happening is that all of a sudden the judgment center over here, the people in the judgment center, they're starting to nod off, okay? The people over here in the polite manners, you know, they're starting to fall asleep too. The, the coordination people, they're completely out, you know, the ones that control how you talk, they're gone, okay? So is this spacecraft going to get back well? No. Now, if you take more of the stimulating drugs, like you're snorting cocaine, you're smoking um, ice or, or methamphetamine or whatnot, um, you have a very different type of a, of a mission control here, and that is you may have a very hyperactive mission control, where everybody's running around all over the place, but nobody really knows what they're doing. They're just running around all over the place. Okay? People can't really pay attention to what's going to be happening on their monitor or whatever because they're so busy running around all over the place. So that's not necessarily what you want either. So what I'm saying in short is that ADHD and drugs and alcohol don't mix well. If you have ADHD and you're drinking and you're doing drugs, it's going to be a whole lot worse than if you don't have ADHD and you're drinking and you're doing drugs. So it is a double whammy. But there is hope. We're going to talk about that.